This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, high-performance cloud hosting for everyone. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and take $20 off your first server package. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's now a few days after Apple's big event, and sometimes I like to do shows a few days later so we can get a little bit of perspective. We can all hear the different takes on uh, on what Apple announces and how they announce it, and then give it a little more thought and a little more evaluation so that it's a little more balanced and we're all just a little bit less reactionary. And I couldn't think of anybody better than to do that kind of considered evaluation of the announcements with than Mr. David Ginsburg. David, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's great to see you too. Uh, this was a, this was a, an exciting week as we talked pre-show. Uh, I've done a number of podcasts this week, plus my Apple, uh, plus my iPhone special interest group with my uh, Mac user group. So uh, it's been a busy week podcast wise, but you know what? We had a lot to talk about. So, I mean, that's what's fun about it is just all kinds of great discussion. Well, that, that's it, and that's why sometimes everybody wants to, you know, get it right out there with, you know, the the news and give their initial impressions, and that definitely has value. And we did that with with Ted Landau, but it's a few days later now. I've had a chance to yeah. look at some of the specs for some of the some of the things, yep. listen to the criticisms, you know, listen to the obvious quick bait opinions because some of those are out there too. Um, and and I wanted to you know sort of just take us through a little bit the high points and and where the what the long term implications are of, of some of these things. Sure. So I I think I don't know if we do it chronologically necessary, but I think maybe we start with um, with the Apple the arcade announcement, um, yeah, the gaming yeah. announcement, um, because I know I'm I'm not a gamer. No. And I don't know how much of a gamer you are. Nope, nor am I. I'm not much of a gamer at all. So this this announcement didn't excite me a lot, um, but uh, I'm excited the fact that Apple is diving into something great like this because uh, uh, it's going to generate a lot of interest, a lot of interest with more people more than ever. Uh, the uh, the arcade is is just a hundred different games, and, and you know maybe a couple of games might appeal to me. I'm gonna, I'm going to try it out just like everybody else. Uh, the great thing is it's it, they're giving you a one month free trial, so. At least in this case, I can I can try it out. Um, uh, of of the of the couple games that they demonstrated at at the event, uh, the Frogger looked kind of neat and fun. But uh, again, like I said, I'm not much of a gamer either, so I, I don't know how excited I'll get over it. But the pricing's not bad for four dollars and ninety nine cents a month, and it's for your whole family, so I think up to six people. So I think Apple was pretty fair with that. And uh, yeah, I, I like I said like you like you, I'm not a gamer, so I, I don't know where I'm gonna go with this. I, I'm not either. I, I believe they said, or what I've read so far is that there are a hundred games that you'll have access to. And I, I didn't really think too much about this particular part of the announcements until something happened this morning on, on, on the morning news that I watched. Um, and that was that they were having a discussion about toys, toys that have been nominated for, I think it's the toy hall of fame. Right. Okay. So that sounds like morning fluff, Right. Everything was, you know, fine. They were talking about which ones were nominated and, you know, which ones they had played with as kids. But they said there's a bit of controversy going on because one of the nominees is the smartphone as a toy, as a gaming device. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and that really took me back and thought, almost to the day the iPhone was launched yeah. and thought, okay, here we are. You know, there's so many ways that the iPhone has changed my world and your world and mm-hmm. really every, everybody's world. But I never thought of it as, you know, having that much effect on gaming because I don't pay attention. The fact that it was even nominated really struck me as, holy cow, you know, I I have not really appreciated just how important gaming is on this device until this moment. Yeah, I guess I can agree with you on that because, um, especially on the iPad, I mean, I th- the iPad's platform in itself is going to give people just an amazing gaming experience. And we'll talk about the iPad in a minute with the new one that just was, uh, just was announced. So, uh, but uh, I, I think, with gaming, yeah, I think iPads is 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 a, is, a, is a big game changer in itself with uh, with with the, these different uh, games that's going to be available on it. I mean, the iPhone, yeah, it's got a good platform, and, and 
I'm one that has the big size phone. I know you like the smaller one, but uh, the, the the I'll be getting the the Max. So uh, gaming on that phone is is going to be fun too because it's got a bigger screen, six point five inch screen. So, um, but yeah, I think the iPad in itself is what's going to really drive a lot of the gaming, and it's probably going to sell them a lot more iPads too. I bet. Well, d- definitely, and and the pricing is is such that anybody can try it for that yeah. price and you're not going to lose a lot. And even if you pick it up and it just, you know, one or two games suit you occasionally for that kind of price, it's just going to sort of be one of those things that, yeah, I'll, I'll pay it just to have it available for those times when I think I might want to do it. Yeah. And again, you know, I, I drink the apple Kool-Aid like we you do. So, uh, so we, who knows? I mean, I'm already still subscribing to Apple news. So I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't read much of it lately, so I probably should probably rethink that one. But uh, I'll try it out. I'll definitely check it out. And of course, because I talk about Apple and, and iOS all the time, uh, I definitely want to know about it because because you know people are going to ask me questions, and and I and I also want to see uh, see what it's all about. So I, I I like I like the titles that they have. I I, I did like the the way the uh, uh, the graphics and everything that's on these games is is, is really cool. So you know, like I said, it'll it, it'll definitely be interesting. I, I'm embarrassed. What what are you paying for Apple News? Um, Apple News is nine ninety nine a month. So nine ninety nine a month. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So well, well then let's use that as a segue to move over into Apple TV Plus. Yeah. Because that's four ninety nine a month. Right. So you have two four ninety nines a month. You have nine ninety nine for Apple <laughs> Music, and you're paying four ninety nine. Uh, pardon me, nine ninety nine for Apple News. Right. So if you add all those services up, it's it can be pretty expensive. I mean, including Apple Music too. You, you subscribe to that, so uh, a lot of subscriptions. So that's why you got to kind of draw the line somewhere, and where you don't think you're not getting much out out of it uh, uh, between those services. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you mentioned Apple TV Plus. Um, that one I th- is is a little more intriguing. Uh, I just like the what the whole part of the whole business uh, uh, model is of Apple Apple TV Plus. Or just TV Plus. Um, the fact of the matter is that a- Apple's really looking into getting into the content business. They really want to c- compete hard against Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime. Both those services have been around for a long time. Both those services offer a lot of great, fresh, new content. And I, I enjoy a lot of great, some of these new shows that have been on Netflix as well as Prime. Um, but uh, I think Apple's going to have their work cut out for them with these shows. I mean, they show about 12 different uh shows that are going to be uh, released at some point. I think only like three or four of them are going to be ready uh, by the time the Apple, uh, by the time TV plus is uh, released. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting, getting big stars like Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon and uh, Steve Carell with the, with the newsroom and, uh, and uh, C with, uh, I can always forget his name. Uh, 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 that Momoa. Jason Momoa, yep. Uh, yeah. And uh, that looks really interesting. And it's had Snoopy and a couple other titles are going to be out there. So I, I think really what they're going to need, what's going to, they're, they're, they're really taking a gamble by looking at some of these shows and thinking, oh, we're, we're hoping that they're going to become a big, huge hit. Um, during during the event, they showed uh, you know, uh, Jenna Rass and Reese Witherspoon on the cover of Entertainment Weekly uh, saying this is, a, this is one of the most anticipated shows of all time. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, but uh, I think it's a type of service Apple could be very successful at if they, they've got plenty of money in, in the hopper that they can, they can, they can bank a lot of these new shows. So I think it isn't going to be a problem there. So just coming up with something that, that is, that's popular, you know? What's really interesting to me, if you think about it, this will be the first time that Apple has controlled the content top to bottom right. with music with music it's always artists that are delivering the product and then it, you know they're the they're the retailer if you will news is similar to that um even the gaming is is similar to that uh applications through the app stores are similar to that you know where somebody else is providing it and they're just mm-hmm. they're just providing the outlet now they're going to provide the actual content and make the decisions about what that content is going to be. And there's been a lot of hay made over, you know, them yeah. trying to make it all family friendly or at least PG. You know, I, 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 I think they're even trying to stay away from R, um, or the R level stuff. 
I hope it works. I really do. Yeah. But I, think I do it, too. They're, they're trying to distinguish themselves from some of the other things out there. And that's part of the, part, part of the interesting strategy that uh, yeah. I hope pays off. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know. Some of this content, I mean, this this newsroom seems like it's going to have a bit of language and others. I don't think it's be any, any you know nudity or any you know hardcore content, but it's, I'm sure they're going to have shows that are going to be a little more edgy because they they need to because you know they want to attract audiences and uh, and uh, not everything is going to be G, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, that's where really what the, where the content's going to be. But really, the, the the cool thing was with what they did with TV Plus is, um, of course, it's not going to come out until November first, so we got a little bit of time yet. But the pricing four ninety nine a month uh, for that was 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 very good. Uh, the uh, uh, the other great thing I thought was what they did was if you buy any Apple device, which whether it be a Mac, uh, an iPad, an iPhone. Uh, an iPod Touch, an Apple TV, any any of those devices. If you purchase that one of those, you're going to get a free year of Apple T- uh, TV Plus. So, uh, I thought that was a pretty pretty cool announcement. And 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 really, what that's going to do is it's got going to get more than the people to buy more devices, and it's also going to get people more interested in the service because now they don't have to pay for it for a year. And it's going to train people to watch okay. shows on those devices. Yeah. So. Uh, Great stuff. I mean, I, I'm more I'm probably the more interested in this because I like I like TV shows and I would like to see where it goes. I'll have a new iPhone, so I'll, at least I'll get to keep, have it for for uh, for at least a year, so I can uh, be able to watch it for free anyway. So at least that I won't have that expense. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's but and it will potentially it will hook you into those shows. I mean, if it has like, like we've talked about with Star Trek, like Star Trek Discovery, you know, having the CBS All Access is the same thing. It gets you hooked, and then you want to subscribe. So, yeah, and in the case of of CBS All Access, you sorry, but you get access to other shows, and you know, I've yeah. uh, obviously the Twilight Zone jumps to mind. Sure. Um, there's, I think I've mentioned on the show before. There's a show called Strange Angel that has not seemed to got got have not re- has not received yeah. a lot of press, but I've I've enjoyed it because it's just twisted and offbeat enough that it appeals yeah. to me. Um, and it's definitely something that would not be able to be put on broadcast TV. Um, and, and, you know, whether you, whether that's your thing or not, but kind of the point is that, okay, they, they pulled me in for one particular show and now I'm finding, yeah, there's some other things here that are very, very interesting to me. I'm kind of thinking that's what uh, Apple TV plus will do. Yeah, I I would agree with you on that. Um, it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to draw you in. So, uh, as I said, let's be interesting to see where it goes. I, I'm uh, I, I'm excited to see uh, uh, how these shows will do, and uh, and so so what we're talking about a year from now and see where these shows are. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, so next up on my list would be the Apple Watch. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> I'm calling the Apple Watch Series 4.5 <laughs> because cool. uh, really. I mean, I have a Series 4, it was, as well as I think you do as well. Um, other than the fact that, yeah, I was excited the fact that it has, it's always on Retina display and it's got uh, the 18-hour battery life, so it's so it can uh, uh, be uh, be uh, able to keep that on all the time. And the compass was another thing that they added. Um, otherwise, I mean, the Series 4 does basically the same thing. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested to see where the, where the, where the Series 5 goes. Um, it's, it's definitely going to do so well. Um, the one big thing I did like the, what they did with the Apple watch is now you have a studio where you can go online and you actually can design your own Apple watch. I mean, that's what really bugged me. I mean, I've owned every model. I think I think about it. Yeah, I had zero through four, so I'll probably give in. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and, uh, in the, but at least this time I can pick a, a band I really want because, you know, you got stuck with the sports b- black band or the white band or it, you, you had no choice. And then you end up spending more money on, on the bands that you want to get. Um, so I, I really, I really like that. And then being able to choose the, whichever designed uh, face you wanted, whether it be uh, the, the, the aluminum or the stainless steel. And now they got all the, all the other ones, the real expensive ones like ceramic and the titanium, which is, a lot of my price range, uh, but uh, but uh, that's what I think. Out of anything that happened with uh, the announcement, I, I think that was uh, that was the best thing they did. Well, I, I like the fact that each time they iterate one of these devices, even if they don't 
at a lot of things, there's always one, at least for me, there's one killer feature that says, okay, it's, it's worth the upgrade to me. Your designation of it being a 4.5 is, is very interesting. Uh, and I, I like it. Um, of course, nobody, mm-hmm. they're never going to do it, but mm-hmm. it, it puts it in perspective. Um, it does. I'm, I'm like you, you know, the, and the watch band thing I think is brilliant because it, there, yeah, I, I have not seen it yet. Maybe you've gone on and played with it. I have not. I have. Okay. So is it fair for me to say that if I pick something, if I pick a floral elastomer band, that the price is one thing, but if I pick one of the Hermes bands, it's a whole lot more, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. If you do the yeah. Hermes or if you do the Nike, I think the Nike is a little more too. Um, those are going to be more, uh, but um, actually I didn't see the Nike and the Hermes as part of that studio. I think the studio was just the, the watch faces, you know, all the way up to the ceramic and then the standard bands all, going across even the M- M- Melanie's band and the, the leather band and, some of those, but I didn't, I don't know if I saw the Hermes. I, I could be wrong. But. Well, and I was, I was picking that as an example, but is it fair to say that the pricing is, is different um, as you change watch bands? If you go with like, like the one I have, I have the Velcro, which I really like. Um, those are all the same price. If you do with the sport band, that's all the same price. If you go to like the Milanese, they, they just lowered the price actually to the Milanese band. It was like, I think $150. Now it's down to a hundred. So they dropped the price on that. So there would be a little bit of adjustment on there. I think they also did that with the leather um, band as well. So, but you will see subtle price differences depending on those higher end bands, but the, the standards, which I just mentioned, um, yeah, you, there won't be any difference in price. You just have to pick your size of watch, of course, the 40 or the 44, there would be different price difference there. And then whether you want the cellular version or just the Wi-Fi uh, version. So, Yeah. And so to me, this was a brilliant way to yeah. take a little bite out of the, the third party market um, by oh, – sure you know, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my watch and, and I don't have to shop for a band because I want to be able to pick my band right as it is. And there's a convenience factor to it and, and it's coming from Apple. So I know it's going to be quality. And I, I, I give Deidre or, and I'll, I'll, I'll point her out. If she's the one that came up with the idea, great. Whoever did, it's a brilliant way to do it. Yeah. And it plays into the whole idea that people like to customize their stuff. They do. And then uh, the other thing that really was obviously stood out with uh, with the watch is their the health uh, features. Um, they're they're gonna they did a health study last year. And I, I I partaked in it and I was safe. I had I had a good heart rate. But they're gonna be doing it and again and, and including the uh, sound uh, te- uh, uh, survey and testing how how your how your hearing works because uh, the, the Apple Watch is now with this with the uh, with the advent of Watch OS six is going to have a a hearing a measurement where if you're in a, if you're in a really loud place, it's going to warn you, Hey, your decibel level is really high. Um, and they're going to be doing a, a survey a studies with, with that as well as heart rate. And uh, I can't remember the other ones, but uh, there was, a, there was a couple and you can be able to sign up for it and it'll be all private. They really stress that, uh, that you don't have to uh, give your private information if you don't want to. Um, so they're being, you know, very particular with that, which is good. Um, but yeah. Apple's really seeing because during the event they they had a nice video showing all these people that really helped them you know save their life and you know you see we're hearing these stories all the time now um, and that's probably one of the biggest things that the watch is is really sold on is the fact that it saved a lot of lives. Yeah, and I the health studies I think are really an interesting thing because who else? I mean, I, I realize okay you you mentioned that we both drink the Apple Cool Aid. But at the same time, who else are you going to trust health information to? If, if you have any sense of privacy about you, your health data is probably one thing that you want to really keep quite private. And who else are you going to say, okay, if they say they're, they're not going to identify me, I believe them. It's, that's going to be Apple. You're not going to do that with Amazon, Facebook, probably not Google, not much of anybody else. But if Apple no. says that, you feel pretty good about it. Yeah. And I do. I mean, I, I trust them with my, my information. I don't, I don't find, I don't for, foresee it being ever a problem. Um, so, um, but you know, the people are sensitive to their information and I can't say I blame them. Uh, but you're right. I think Apple of any company, like I'd feel I can trust them. Linode.com slash Mac voices is where you want to go. If you need a virtual hosted cloud server, 
Why is Linode so great? Because that's what Linode specializes in. They feature native SSD storage, a 40 gigabit network, and industry-leading processors so that your server is FAST fast. Because you pay for only what you use, with hourly billing across all plans and add-on services, no extra charges for data transfer, no hidden fees or nasty surprises at the end of the month. Because Linode has a new cloud manager with an improved user interface, so deploying your server or servers is easier than ever. Because Linode has data centers around the world, including one just launched in Toronto and one opening soon in Mumbai. So if location matters, Linode has it covered. Because they have a large documentation library to help you get started and help you make the most of your server. Because Linode has 24-7 live customer support, so if you get stuck or have issues, help is just a phone call away. Because Linode has a ton of add-ons, so that you can customize your server with exactly what you want and what you need. Backups, blocks, node balancers, load balancers, and much more. So what do you need to take advantage of all this? Visit linode.com slash macvoices to get set up and to get $20 credit toward your first server. Again, Linode.com slash MacVoices gets you $20 off your first server. Check it out now and be up and running in minutes. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. So up to this point, I, I, I felt like the keynote was pretty solid. I mean, we yeah. started out with some of the lower end stuff. We're sliding toward the higher end. Um, and then we start talking about the iPad. Yeah. And this one, I admit, I've, I was I was happy to see it. I was a little surprised because it yeah. only addressed the the quote unquote low end iPad, mm -hmm. uh, but it seems just a, a great way to get even more people interested. And you know, here we go. You combine it with the Apple TV Plus and the arcade, and now you've got you you've got this amazing gaming con, uh video consumption machine that can do everything else. Yeah, I, I agree. Um I think the the biggest thing was the um the the low end model was a smaller size screen by by not much. You went from a 9.7 inch now to the uh to the 10.2 inch screen. Um other thing with which I was excited about is they had the smart connector so now you can get the the full size uh, keyboard. Uh, to work with it because I think that's a lot of people wanted to be able to do that previous version. You had to, you could do Bluetooth only. So uh, that was, a, that was a limit of what you could do. So, um, but spec wise, they, they kept the processor right at the same, at the very near the same level. It was at, it's an A10 processor. Um, again, I, I don't, I don't foresee that being a problem for most people who have iPads. I mean, I, I have the pro and, I definitely, when I compared the two next to each other, I could see a huge difference. I mean, the display is much sharper on a Pro versus this model. But for a base price of $329, and I always see them putting them on sale all the time. I went out, I'd be all surprised. We're talking around Christmas time. Uh, we're, 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 we're suggesting our gifts uh, on the show um, that this iPad's going to be probably down to $250 or $279. So it's very possible. So. But I think Apple was smart in doing this and keeping this this alive and, and generating interest in it because not only is it people it, not only is it generating interest with with uh, uh, normal consumers that that want to get an entry level iPad and be able to get into it without having to spend a lot of money uh, the education market I think is going to really dive into this further the pricing on that was two ninety nine for the base model. Um, I like to see more and more Chromebooks go away in schools because, you know, Chromebooks are, I have a lot of overhead. These iPads are a lot uh, easier to maintain as well as they're, uh, I think you get much more interaction with them because of what they can do and how much fun they are. So, so the, I think that's really what, in my uh, observations, what the kind of the motivation of what Apple had done uh, with this, this new, this entry level model. I, yeah, I agree. I, I feel like, well, to your point, I, I want to touch on that, the educational part. I would love to see somebody do, write a definitive, definitive article about, as you said, the, the, the maintenance costs of, of a, a Chromebook, um, the security issues of a Google Chromebook, um, you know, the, the applications that are generating information for Google uh, because okay. the kids are using them versus the iPad and what it is now. I, I, I think the iPad arguably is a little less rugged. So I, I get that, you know, but, but at the same time, yeah, cases. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
But yeah, I, I felt like this was a really good device. And I felt like th that little bump in screen real estate is is good because it further differentiates this model from the earlier refreshed iPad mini. Right. So it, it feels like now you have a size, depending on what your needs are or your preferences are, you have a size that is noticeably different at every level, but not obnoxiously so. Right. Um, and so, you know, if, if, if you want something that you can put by your bedside, you're probably going to do an iPad mini or something that you can just stick in, in a, a backpack easily along with a bunch of other things to get on a plane. If you want something that's a little more productivity or, oriented, um, you can get one of the larger iPads. And as you said, now there's a keyboard. The iPad mini is a terrific productivity machine mm -hmm. with a bridge keyboard. Um, so you even have third, you have third party options to, to turn that into a productivity machine. I just, this is feels like probably the, the strongest iPad lineup that we've seen uh, from Apple. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and, and I, and I discussed that. I want to cross the line because I want people to understand um, what, where, where should you go? What, what iPad really should you buy? But you, you know, because you go with the iPad, then you have the iPad mini and then you have the iPad air, the, the second gen or the, the newer gen. Um, the air has a little more, it's got a faster processor, but it's a nice little sweet spot. So people don't have to spend the money that the pro is at, but, and still get something decent. Um, and then you go up to the pro line series, you've got the pro 11 and you got the pro 12.9, uh, inch uh, screens. So yeah, those are going to, you're going to spend more money here at the thousand dollar level or the $1,500 level, depending on which one you get. So yes, I, I agree with you. I think this is the strongest, uh, group of iPads they've had in their line for, for quite a while. And we saw some of the demonstrations and, and nothing really new, but the more and more I see about iOS 13 and some of the enhancements, the, frankly, the more excited I get because sure. this feels like it's, it's a big step forward in software and all of these devices are going to be able to run it. And so now, once again, you have a machine that, that, that suits you. I mean, if you have big hands, you want a bigger machine. If, you, if you're a smaller person, maybe you want a smaller machine they all are going to have these amazing new features. Absolutely. And um, I think the biggest thing that they've done with, uh, with the, with, with uh, iOS, uh, iPad OS, I guess if we talk about iPad is, uh, is file sharing. Um, file sharing is, is, is now going to be basically supported even more. So the big thing is the fact that you can be able to plug in a uh, USB thumb drive device into uh, your iPad and be able to do it just like you did on a PC or a Mac. You'd be able to copy your files, back up your photos, do whatever you'd want, like with 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 the same type of file system uh, functionality as you do, you know, like I said, with a PC or a, or a Mac. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I, I've been beta testing for a while, I and I tried it out, and uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm very pleased to what it can do couple of other features they are going to add but it isn't going to be on ipad os right away is um is the icloud drive folder sharing so they are talking about doing that too um and do you just imagine being able to share something on the cloud through icloud which you could never do before and you had to have the other third-party services like google drive or dropbox or whatever um so i'm excited about that too so just add that into the mix with the, with the not only the ipad uh, line is the the os I, ipad os is uh, going to be really good, really cool. So, some of these features feel like they're features we've been waiting for. They're features we've been wanting, and for whatever reason, whether it was uh, ubiquity of of, uh, of of internet access, or whether it was just the processors couldn't keep up, or the storage was too expensive. Mm -hmm. But but you're right. Now we're finally getting to that vision of being able to have a lot of this stuff in the cloud accessible through whatever device. Um, you, you start a project on one device, you go and finish it at home or at office on another device and maybe review it on the train on a third device. Um, I, I, I just, I, I love this and I'm anxious to see it continue to evolve. And, and once again, we get into that thing where Apple's playing the long game. You know, they have this vision. We all, oh, uh, yeah, we, and, and the journalists all get a little agitated, but why can't it do this? Or it should be able to do that. And it's like, well, of course it could, it should, but we may not just be there yet. I feel like we're, we're getting to where we want to be. 
Yeah, no, I agree with you 100. And and uh, just as they they're, they're saying this this version of the operating system, iPad OS and, and iOS 13, it's probably one of the more solid versions out there. And even 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 the support on on the older devices is still out there too, which is which I'm happy about. about more so on the iPhone than on the iPad, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's I'm I'm definitely excited about it. So we come to the iPhone. Yep. <laughs> the biggest so, announcement of all. Yes. Yeah, so this uh, maybe this is a trick question. I'm not sure. What was your biggest surprise about the iPhone 11? The lenses. I didn't. I not did not expect at all that I would see a three lens iPad iPhone. Um, I, I I'm just super stoked to even get my hands on this thing to try it out. Uh, I, I that that was probably one of the the biggest things that stood out for me. Uh, uh, as far as the iPhone goes, I'm also excited the fact that it's again Apple was very smart with with um, getting a device that is going to be rel- you can go from the really inexpensive line to the top end mo- models in, in the Pro Max and the Pro. Uh, it, it's just, just they did the same thing with the iPad and now they've done with the iPhone and I'm just very very excited about that too. Just getting people to to, to upgrade and to buy new iPhones uh, in this case. I agree with you. The, the three lenses is, is great, and we'll get back to that in a second. But honestly, my biggest surprise was something that didn't happen. I really thought that the iPhone would go USB-C. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that, too. I was I was kind of surprised because the, the interesting thing is I was looking at the picture in the uh, uh, in the keynote, and they showed that new uh, the power adapter, and I looked at it. That was under Phil Schiller, and, and it said fast charge. I'm like, I'm excited about that. That's awesome. Finally, we're going to have a power adapter inside the box that actually is going to fast charge my iPhone. I mean, without me having to have something else to do it. Um, and then I'm looking at the plug, but I said, boy, that plug looks awfully like a USB-C. But I guess it is. It is a USB-C on the plug, but the other end of it's going to be lightning. So I guess we're getting a lightning to USB-C cable in the box. Uh, but yeah, I am kind of, I'm, I am kind of, kind of disappointed that they didn't do it this time around. Maybe they're going to wait for the 12. You know, it's hard to say. Well, I'm, you know, I, I've been arguing with myself. I'm not sure whether I'm disappointed. I was just surprised. Yeah. Um, I mean, in some ways, I'm relieved because it means that my lightning charging docks and everything that I have, have been used, and I know a lot of people have gone wireless, and that's fine. So have I in, in right. places, but I still have plenty of of USB. Uh, excuse me, of lightning cables. And so, you know, they're not all going to go go by the wayside. But I just really thought that was something that maybe would happen, um, especially as these things get more capable. And we're seeing, um, now, to, now to go back to the three lenses, you know, we're seeing all these amazing capabilities for photos. Uh, you are seeing... Well, the the filmic demo got my attention. I you mean, just it, it just read my mind. I mean, I, uh, that filmic demo was just incredible. I can't yeah. wait to buy it <laughs> and to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I mean, I've I've been using filmic now for a long time. Yeah, as as my video app of choice, and you know, now to be able to do some of those things. I mean, frankly, it's probably beyond what I anything I I recognize I need to do now. But the fact that I'll be able to do it may change my position on some things. Yeah, I would kind of agree on that. I mean, I, I'm i a photographer at heart. I mean, I'm more of a hobbyist, but I mean, I've used DSLRs for a long time and, and t- taken plenty of my share of pictures. I, I'm, I, I'm almost convinced this, 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 this latest iPhone is going to be so close to these professional photographers could seriously think about making it their, one of their primary devices now just because of the quality of the photos and the quality of the lenses that are, are going to be available on this, on this device or something that easy. I think, in, I mean, professional photographers. Yeah. I don't think you're ever going to get the DSLR out of their, out of, out of their hands because they're just so used to them. They love the lenses. The glass is important to them. Uh, the actual functionality and such, but uh, I, I seriously think this could be you know, a definite uh, second choice um, when it comes to a camera for a photographer. Well, and of course, you and I are talking about the the, the pro level um, iPhone 11s, right. but the iPhone 11 non-pro is a pretty healthy machine. And I have to tell you, uh, right up right up to the point that they did the filmic demo, I was thinking, you know, maybe I really don't need t- 
to go to the pro level. Maybe this is good enough. Mm-hmm. And then they showed the night shot uh, and they showed, you know, the, the, the multiple capture multiple videos once from, from each camera. And it's like, Holy cow. Okay. You know, I think that, I think that's made my decision. And the more I've read about it since, since that, yeah. Okay. I've, it, it's not that much more a month because I'm on the upgrade plan. Like I think you are. I am as well. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's not going to cost me that much more to, to get that. Um, but I, but I admit it, it gave the 11 is such a great machine that it gave me pause. Yeah. I mean, it's got the exact same processor, both the 11 and 11 pro models, the exact same processor. So it's processing speed is going to be the same. Really. Your only differences is going to be the, uh, the liquid run on display. Uh, versus the higher end display on the on the pro um but for someone to get in at 699 as a base price this 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 thing is a machine i mean you really have some 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 great stuff here you had the 10r out last year that's what people were buying last year uh and the t- they're still selling the 10r but it's only 100 dollars less than this one i mean for the 100 bucks i, I mean I, I say no brainer here the 11 is going to be your 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 phone of choice uh, the screen size is decent. It's 6.1 inch uh, size. So, I mean, it's not a terribly big phone, but at least you're getting a good size uh, screen uh, on the Fort on the 11. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't see how you wouldn't uh, not want this if you're not too overly concerned about uh, having the, uh, uh, the, the three lenses as a, as more of enhancements for, for photography. And in making it in all the colors, I mean, that clearly Thanks. makes it the successor to the XR, um, but it also is is the way to appeal to a lot of people, just like what we were saying earlier about customization. People love to customize their things. They they love to feel like that, the color of their phone, even if they're going to cover it with a case, they, they still know what color it is underneath, and it seems to help them define themselves. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Uh, it uh, it's it's definitely going to. Uh, you just got to decide what's going to make be best for you. If you want to spend a little extra money, I mean, you know, the, the pros, yeah, quite a quite a jump from the, from the eleven. So that's where you got to decide what's important. Um, if photography is important to you, uh, then uh, you may want to look take a look at the at the eleven um, and and see and see what it is. So uh, yeah, I agree with you. One thing that struck me, David, in watching the keynote, and I'm not sure how much you've gotten to really delve into it, but um, the the gentleman, I'm, I apologize, I don't did not write his name down. I should have, but the gentleman who came on and probably did 10, 12, I don't think it was 15, probably 10 or 12 minutes of really deep geekery on the the 11 and the all the all the really technical details. I swear to you, I think he got one of the biggest rounds of applause of of the whole event. Yeah, he he did go through a lot of high tech stuff, and I was like, kind of like, oh wow, this is really uh, up there. <laughs> but I guess it really it really set the stage of understanding really what Apple has done in and doing some really high end stuff on these on these devices, um, and and really what it can do to uh, to, to 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 process uh, what you want to do with it. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Well, and you contrast that, and again, I, I, I want to be real clear here that I'm not, not picking on anybody or making fun of anybody on either side, but you con- I contrasted his very technical, very engineering-oriented discussion with the Johnny I videos that we've seen in the past of you know how it's it's so smooth and so sexy and it's the finest machine and you know it's it's milled down to this precision point and everything and and certainly the design has not suffered at all but this was a lot more the guts of the machine and it at least for the audience there that they really seemed to to, to resonate with that yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I agree. It it just it just really gets them excited about the, about this product. And 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 is it going to be worth the investment of wanting to 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 upgrade? So I talk to a lot of people. I mean, there's still people out there with with iPhone sixes. They're still they're they're perfectly happy with those devices. Um, they're I hate to tell them, but it's at the end of the road for for an operating system update. But uh, but uh, it's uh, if if they're happy, then that's great. I mean, but there's so many different uh, choices here now that you can jump into and, and it'll fit whatever budget you feel you're, you're uh, want, you want to get jump into. So, 
And, and I, I want to see a little. Uh, I want to see all of us put a little more effort into taking advantage of of all the capabilities or more of the capabilities of our phones. I know the things that that I about my phone that I don't fully appreciate, and some of those capabilities are unlocked by third party vendors and, and their applications. And sometimes they're just they're built in capabilities. I know I, I just pushed, pushed an article out to Mac Voices magazine as we record this, I believe it was yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, talking about the ability to scan QR codes with your iPhones. Yep. And I, I know I know a good two dozen people that have asked me uh, probably in the past year that, you know, what is this QR code thing and what do I do with it? And it's like, what's well, yes. built right into your iPhone. You know, all you have to do is aim it and it will do what it's supposed to do. And they were amazed. They they had no idea. Yeah, that's that's surprising. QR codes have been around for a long time, and uh, that they they and the iPhones have had support. I think going back as far back as iOS ten, maybe iOS eleven, but where you can just bring up your camera and, uh, and it'll go right to wherever that QR code is going to take you uh, without having to have a third party app to do it. Um, so I mean, so yeah, I, that that was surprising. Yeah. Yeah, and all the features, all the you know, the, we saw some of the new capabilities, and certainly, I think at this point, you know, a phone is a phone. I mean, you know, you pick it up, you talk into it, or you use the uh, the AirPods like like I'm wearing. Um, but mm-hmm. as, as yeah, yeah, but as a mobile computer, um, a mobile computing device, I should say, you know, that it, it's no longer just a phone. It's what it's the name we refer to it as. But it's yeah. becoming more and more capable of doing more and more things, and I think we need to try to make people understand that it okay. It's it's not just a Facebook machine, and as cool right. as the photos are, it's not just an Instagram machine or a Snapchat machine. You know, it's it's a machine to really make your life better. You just have to remember that it can do it and do that much learning, and you're there. Um, one thing, one thing I, 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 you, you hit upon, you know, the differences with the, with uh, uh, t- taking pictures and video. Uh, if you remember during the keynote, they actually talked a lot about a lot more about the video recording and what what some of the new things that it added. Uh, one of them that stood out to me was a quick take video with subject tracking. Do you recall the name Quick Take? There was a camera that was named Quick Take in the '90s that Apple marketed. It was oh. one of their first digital cameras. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, I remembered well. I had one. I thought thought you. I figured you did. So yeah. I, I was. I, I, and no one's really mentioned that. And uh, we mentioned it on for Mac guys only. But I wanted to mention it again here on, on your show and how how Apple took a old marketing name and then and they and they, cl- they they put it in one of their features and in, in video recording uh, uh, on on the new iPhone. Well, if you own the trademark, and you know now. Oh, yeah. The the original quick take camera is you know is absolutely part of history. I mean, oh yeah. man, I'm a, I'm afraid I'm afraid I'll understate it, but I think that the resolution was like three sixty by two forty yeah. or something. It was a post. I had I had a Kodak DC fifty, the little one that looked like a bullet. That that one was right around the same uh, time. I think that that the, the, the camera came out and uh, yeah, it, it it was low end. So um, the other the other trademark I think they're going to trademark is the word slofy. I cracked up when I saw that one. <laughs> Slofy. So you're doing a slow motion uh, uh, selfie, I guess, because that's a new feature they've added in the camera where you can do a slow motion uh, uh, selfie, which you weren't able to do before in the uh, previous version. Uh, but now we have a new word. Slofy. <laughs> and, and, you know, and listen, it was, I mean, it was very artfully done. It, it, it was. It was one of those things like, yeah, I want to try that. You know, I mean, sort of like the emoji and some of those things that, you know, for, for, for a lot of us, they were fun to play with. And then you kind of forgot about them, you know, and, and, and sure. a lot of people still use them. And I, you know, great if, if you still have a use for it. But it was one of those features like, yeah, they, they kind of did it because they could. And, I've just got to figure out a good use for it. And if I can't, then I yeah. won't use it. But it'll definitely be fun to try. Uh, and then the other thing, I, I like taking panoramic pictures. And, and I, I didn't even realize how much megapixel that this is this new camera is going to be capable of is is up to 63 megapixels taking a, a panoramic photo. I mean, that's just incredible. I mean, I've taken some great uh, panoramic pictures with my iPhone over the years. And 
uh, I'm, I'm excited just to try that again and see how even more uh, creative I can be with it. I, I had a conversation with a professional photographer um, a couple, uh, actually before the Apple event. And we were talking about just how these cameras have, have taken away the consumer market. I mean, yeah, there are still consumer cameras out there, but how many times do you see anybody buying one? You know, because it's you got to carry it around. He even he even said that when he goes on vacation, you know, he doesn't take his DSLR. He he uses his iPhone. Yep. You know, now if he's shooting for professionally, sure, then he's right. got you know one of the big beautiful Nikon DSLRs, and he can he can definitely do some things with that camera that the iPhone can't. There's no question because of the lenses Absolutely. and all. Big zoom. And- but I'm not going to carry a DSLR around all the time. Yeah. I'm to the point now that even if I go on a special trip or something where I want to take photos, it's just too much trouble. I can do 98% of what I want with my iPhone, and that's more than good enough. And what comes out is phenomenal. Oh, absolutely. And I just was on a trip, trip to Italy uh, a couple months ago, and I brought both my DSLR and my, uh, uh, and my iPhone. And I was like, I, I want to use my iPhone more. I, I just... Didn't want to lug this camera on every time you lug it around. Oh, I got to make sure I don't lose it. I don't leave it somewhere. I got to carry it on my shoulder. Uh, but I'm still getting fabulous pictures out of the iPhone. Absolute fabulous. Yeah, yeah. It just it depends on what you want to do with it. Mm-hmm. And the and I we we would absolutely be remiss if we didn't talk about the low light um, images. Light, night modes, yes. We the night mode feature. I mean, I know that Google came out with that with their on their Pixel series phones. I mean, I have a Pixel 2 XL that I've been playing with, and it, it was amazing. And I was surprised that Apple hadn't come out with it sooner. But I'm going to be definitely interested to see uh, how how well that that works on the iPhone. And I'm I'm I have this good feeling it's going to be I'm going to be taking some a lot of low light pictures and really really love it. Well, it's, it's, there was something today, again, as we record this, there was something today posted to Twitter that this person had gotten their hands on on a new iPhone. And, you know, they did side by side with the, I think it was the XS and the new the new phone with the, with the night mode. And what you saw looked phenomenal. And, it, yeah. you know, this allegedly was not, now, was it a leak, you know, or was it set up? I don't know. Yeah. But be, because, you know, obviously when you see it in their keynote, they're going to make it look good. Um, but, yeah, if it if it performs anywhere near like that, that's going to plug a big hole that was in iPhone photography. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I just, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I already put my pre, pre-order in. I'm actually going with the uh, the midnight green color. I really want that midnight green color because I thought Whoa. it was really cool. Because that's that they've never done that before on these on these on these higher end phones. It always was the basics. You got your gold, your space gray, and your silver. But they now they have the midnight green. I I I, don't, I think it's a good looking color. I looked as I looked at it. So um, not that I have a case on it anyway, but <laughs> at least uh, I have a cool color. Is that dedicated to the amount of money you're spending on it? No, it's the same. <laughs> it's, no, no, I meant the green. That's that why oh. you decided to go with the green. Oh. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, the the tennis Max I have now, I went with space gray. I, I always would go with space gray. So I'm gonna I'm do something different this time. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, you know, there's another thing that we sort of skipped right over, but this allegedly is the hardest glass that has ever been put in an iPhone, according yeah. to the keynote. And they didn't do a lot of talk about that. And interestingly, I have seen virtually no follow up comments in any of the uh, coverage. I haven't either. And so. I haven't either. Yeah. What does it you know? What does it mean? Is that was that hype or? But they but they seem to bounce. They showed a lot of bouncing iPhones. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'll be excited to see that. And I think they also talked about it even more water resistance than ever before because of this harder class. Because um, it seems I always end up scratching a a, a, a screen because I just don't like those screen protectors. They drive me crazy. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I I'm going to be excited to see uh, if this glass really is going to hold up to what what uh, what uh, Apple is uh, advertising. Yeah, I usually put a screen protector on. I, I don't particularly care for them, but you know, mm-hmm. it, 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 my phone inevitably ends up in a pocket with some keys or something. As much well, as I try not to, it's already and, happened on this one. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, you try to protect it a little bit, but. 
Yeah, all, and all those little things that just, you know, there were so many little pieces to this announcement that are it's it's easy to get lost in them. Um, but yeah, um, the other thing we we didn't mention too was uh, uh, the battery life. They 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 touted that uh, five hours more than the 10s and 10s Max, and four hours more than the 10s. So that's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I've had the uh, the Apple uh, case uh, on my iPhone Tennis Max for a while. And I've been loving it because I've never run out of batteries uh, because now I have the two batteries basically. Uh, uh, interesting to see if they'll come out with a new one for the the uh, the, the Pro Max, but uh, you know, may may not need to because because uh, this battery is going to last longer. So. Yeah, I I don't think I'm I'm misstating this, but I'm pretty sure I saw that Mophie has already announced one and is going to have one already in, in in short order. That they because yeah. I think the t- the headline was that Mophie was beating Apple to the punch for the for the battery case. Um, yeah. So I'll, I will wait to see. I will wait to see. I I I I've I've liked battery cases when I've needed them, but they're they just add that much weight and bulk to it. And, you know, I, I would prefer to carry around one of those little thin uh, credit card size batteries and, you know, give it a little extra juice when I'm not using it. But oh, you know, yeah, I've, I've been loving this case, been loving this case. Yeah. And yeah. people like don't like it. And I give it to them. I hold them. I hold my phone. God, how do you how do you hold this thing? It's so heavy. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't want to have I, I'm just I'm a freak with battery. I want to have my battery. I don't mm-hmm. want to get down to 10 <laughs> percent. To wrap up, um, I know you said you're going with the midnight green. What capacity? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with 256. Um, I was, I was going to do 64. Uh, I did 256 on the tennis max and I just thought about it again for the few extra, for the extra money. Um, I'm just going to, I, I'm just going to go all out on again. Uh, I think it's, it's got good. Uh, I want to know I have enough sweet spot of size. I mean, 512 is insane. I never would do that, but, uh, uh, but I, I think 256 is good. I mean, I, especially with these, with these cameras now, then I'm going to be taking a lot more pictures and, even though there a lot of it's going to be on the i on iCloud, um, I, I just I, just like battery life, I'm I'm, I'm I, I freak about not having enough space either. So, <laughs> yeah, that's I agree. I think that's the sweet spot. The five twelve is going to be for someone who is going to use this for filmmaking. Yeah, and as as a, almost as a dedicated camera that just happens to be a phone. Because um, I looked at what I'm using on my current uh, XS, which is or ten S or ten. Yeah, tennis, whichever way you pronounce it. Um, and, you know, I, I know that I have more videos and photos on there that just need to be cleaned off. Um, and so I think I can be comfortable in a, in a 256. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always that temp- temptation to just, because you can never get too much storage. But at the same time, I, do you really need it? So, yeah, right um, there with you. So I'm excited when, uh, like I said, pre-orders are going in tomorrow well, as we record this. Um, and, uh, at, uh, and, and this time they did an interesting, uh, you know, I remember always we would have to get up in the middle of the night to boot the pre-order because uh, it'd be uh, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Eastern time to uh, 2 a.m. Central, 3 a.m. Eastern time to have to get up that early to, to do your pre-order. Now they think that they're now doing it at 5 a.m. Pacific, which is, you know, 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern and norm, normal human beings can now place orders at a normal hour when we, when we, uh, when we place our pre-orders for, uh, for the, uh, for the iPhone. And the, the cool thing was they, they, with the upgrade plan we, we, that we both have, you can pre-order, you can pre pre-order it by, by uh, getting everything in place, the, your approval for the, the credit and, uh, and committing to the trade-in and all that stuff all ahead of time. So then all you have to do is when you get back on, on, on the Apple app, on your iPhone is you just uh, go in and place your order and then you're done. And, and I don't know who came up with that idea, but that's, that's just completely brilliant. No, hundred percent. Th- that takes away so much of the, of the crush um, and the, the crashing of servers and the inability to remember those days. <laughs> I do it. I do it for so many times. <laughs> well, sure. And, and you were going in there and saying, okay, now I, I know what I want, but how do I select I mean, I've already got my mind made up. It's not like I'm browsing. I know exactly what I want, but I've got to figure out, okay, and, and make sure. And I know on one occasion, um, I don't even remember which model it was. I ended up or, accidentally ordering the wrong thing and having to call later in the day to correct it. Yeah. I, I think it was the wrong wrong configura- uh, wrong memory configuration. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And now it's like, okay, now I can take all the time I need, figure out exactly which one I want, 
but I can't actually order it, but it saves it. So all I have to do tomorrow is log in, hit that button. Yes. Buy. And it's mine. It's, it's, you know, it's genius. It's right, genius. Well, you asked, you asked me which phone am I getting? Are, are you going to be getting a new phone? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I have to, as I said earlier, I was kind of on the bubble a little bit, but um, someone pointed out we had our tech talk dinner the other night and they pointed out that uh, they had done the research because I hadn't had a chance to at that point. And that basically for what we are paying now on our plan, we just extended another 24 months and, and it stays essentially the same. And so, you know, okay, it, it almost feels foolish not to do the upgrade. Um, okay. so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go space gray two fifty six iPhone 11 pro, uh, not the max. I knew that you were, you were going there. So, well, I, I like the big one, David, but it just doesn't fit in, in the, in the, uh, the pants pocket or the vest or the, the suit pocket as easily. And so, you know, and I, I've, I've really enjoyed getting back to that smaller factor. Sure, I, I love big screen real estate. Sure. But if I really need it, I can pull out one of my iPads. That's so, true. You know. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm, you I'm said that, spending. What? A lot of money we're spending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you said <laughs> the, you, uh, the watch is a maybe for you? Watch is a maybe. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. I'm gonna just kind of sit back and see where it goes. Um, I'm still loving my series four. How about you? Um, I think there will be one in the future. I'm. I don't know that I'll jump on it right away. Of course, yeah, I'll probably it's... make that decision tomorrow and jump tomorrow, on it. But right. um, <laughs> yeah, it's that 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 always on feature. You know, I I it's enticing. I acknowledge it's enticing and. The, the raise to wake has been very, very good to me, but not all the time. And so is it, is it worth that extra money? I think a lot's going to, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what the options are out there to do any kind of trade in for your Apple watch. Yeah. Um, I looked on Apple. It's not very good. It was the last one I, when I traded in my series three, I think they gave me like $200 or 275 or something like that. And, uh, I looked, uh, on, I looked on it now, the series four, they're only going to give $110, which is nothing. Yeah, so watch us a year so, old. I think I can go third party. I can go aftermarket selling it better than that. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, there, I think there'll be a little bit of competition to see who can give you the best deal, mm -hmm. um, because the four is a terrific, a terrific watch. It is. And they're not um, going to. It's 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 the, they stop making it, so it's not going to be around. So it's a series three, series five. So yeah. So, folks, if if anybody out there wants an Apple Watch Four, I knew two guys that would be happy. Yeah, to that's to right. You know. I got one ready for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we can work out something. Yeah, we can work we out something. <laughs> David, thank you. This has been fun. Um, oh, a lot of fun. Anything, anything we've missed? Anything we want to hit? That I don't. Um, other than just making sure everybody knows that iOS thirteen is going to be out on uh, September nineteenth, thirteen point zero. And then uh, shortly thereafter, I think 13.1 is going to come out uh, uh, for upgrades. I don't need to go into details with that. But And then iPad OS is, is, is a hard uh, September 30th. So that's what's kind of delaying what the iPad, the new iPad being released uh, uh, until that comes out. So because that's when the iPad comes out. So we should be, everybody should be aware of that uh, when that's coming out. The, uh, the latest version of iOS uh, 13, 13.0 is what's called Gold Master. So, the developers who have it, um, it, that's the final version. So it is coming out, but I think it's going to start with that version first. So, yeah. And I've, and I've, I want to, I'll, I'll get the last word by um, responding to something you said that um, I just love. Um, and that is 8 a.m. order time on the East yeah. Coast. Yeah. You know, f f sorry, sorry, West Coasters, because I, I've, you, you, you're a bunch of wimps. You know, <laughs> we've been getting, we've been getting up at 3 a.m. Yeah. and you've been able just to stay up to midnight, and now you've got to yeah. suffer just a little bit. 5 so, a.m. <laughs> yeah, just just get up and go order your order your Apple devices, and then go to the office early and help yes. pay for them. So, <laughs> Agree. <laughs> David, where can folks find you when you're when you're not here uh, having all this fun with and, and spending all this money? Yeah, uh, you can go uh, to my podcast uh, website, which is in touch with iOS.com. Just recorded an episode uh, 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 solo this time, and uh, and uh, no Chuck will be coming on the, on the show soon as well. And uh, 
had a lot of fun and uh, definitely check that out. And then uh, you can catch me uh, on Twitter at DaveG65. And I also, for for non, non-tech, I do a podcast called Off the Charts Horse and uh, for horse racing enthusiasts. So I love that. I love the fact that you're doing a horse racing podcast. <laughs> that is, that's cool. <laughs> we have a Thank lot of fun. you, my friend. It's, it's really good to Thank see you, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yes, we will. Thank you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I hope we gave you just a little more depth this time uh, with the Apple announcements. Um, by the time you see this, uh, the pre-orders will have started. So you're behind. Catch up. Apple.com. <laughs> Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at Cashfly.com.